Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station, where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages, as every little bit helps. Tonight I've got Bo with me. We've got some major updates on Rocco and happenings. They're going on at the recent time. Um, for all of our listeners, Monday we laid down the lien on the federal state. Uh, we put a claim on their banks as of as commissioned by the 1789 Judiciary Act. At that time, the lien on Rocco was lifted. There was no bond listed. As of this morning, Rocco has been released, according to McHenry's website. And on this website, it says, recently released on 5-1-2014 at 9.47 a.m. and transferred to another agency. Now, Kenosha County swears up and down they don't have him. They've been telling us this all day long. Uh, It's absolutely amazing how they're trying to clean their hands and get out of the liability for holding him. But it's already done. As Jesus said, you're known by your works and actions. Not what you say you do or what you could do in the future, but what has already occurred, which is the foundation of our process. Our process only acts upon the evidence. Our process is only based on and founded on the truth, which is God's word. It doesn't change and it doesn't alter The path never changes. The walk never changes. We keep going forward regardless of being shaken down by a criminal enterprise. What this means to all agents, to all attorneys, to all corporate counsel, to the board of directors, to the Attorney Generals and everyone under the Judiciary Act of 1789 known as 28 U.S.C. United States Code. What this means for you is that you have declared war on humanity. You have maintained the same war throughout documented court record since this one case began two years ago or more. At this time, you're evidenced to be in the action of genocide, to be in the action of human trafficking. These actions are acts of war. The reason you got the lien on Monday, was your insurer acknowledged and evidenced that you are not only in the act of war, but that you are maintaining civil war risks. You are not covered by cover hold insurance or otherwise. You are taking great risks on behalf of the United States Incorporated and that governing body. Your handlers have all of this information. That being said, you can look in any mainstream media right now and find out what happens to Fall Guys. I will only warn you once. That was it. How are you, Bo? Okay, but yeah, in truth, we've warned them over and over and over again. Yeah, I'm obviously highly irritated by them not playing by their own rules as per the rules of the exchequer. We won this thing uh, many months ago, okay, and and, and instead of uh, playing by the rules, they're going to cheat and um, play hardball here uh, to the bitter end, it seems. And, uh, you know, 
humanity and cops and agents are all going to suffer until this ends. Now, I would like to talk about tonight political cannibalism. From the sometimes.com, ex-state legislator Farnham faces child porn charges. Former Representative Keith Farnham traded child pornography online and even boasted that he'd molested a six-year-old girl, according to federal prosecutors. The Elgin Democrat, 66, emailed to what he thought was a fellow pedophile videos of children who appeared to be as young as six months old being molested, according to a criminal complaint filed Monday. Of course, Mr. Farnham there is a fall guy on behalf of the judiciary, corporate counsel, the association of corporate counsel, and the rest of Congress, the United States Senate, and the House of Representatives, who are all in the action of child predation, who are all pedophiles working to maintain national security according to the 1947 National Security Act and related policy. This has been an ongoing war against humanity since the inception of politics that only changes face according to market conditions. This is no longer tolerated by the United States, lowercase. As you notice in the mainstream media, cops are going down, agents are being found dead of suicide by stuffing themselves into duffel bags and locking them from the outside without leaving any handprints or fingerprints on the locks. From the NewYorkTimes.com, New York City police officer is arrested in Winchester shooting. Pelham, New York, an off-duty New York City police officer shot a motorist six times at a stoplight in Westchester County this week in what an official called a, quote, completely random attack, end quote. The shooting occurred shortly before midnight on Tuesday at the intersection of 6th Avenue and Lincoln Avenue in Pelham, Chief Joseph Benefico of the Villages Police Department said at a news conference on Wednesday. For reasons that are not clear, the officer, identified as Brendan Cronin, 27 of Yonkers, pointed a 9mm Glock handgun at another car parked at a stoplight and fired, Chief Benefico said. A person who had been briefed on the matter said that before the shooting, Officer Cronin had been drinking alcohol with other officers who were also off-duty. The victim, who the authorities said was a 47-year-old resident of nearby New Rochelle, told investigators that he was sitting in the passenger side of a vehicle when he heard popping sounds and realized he had been shot, Chief Benfico said. The driver of the vehicle, who was not injured, drove the victim to Montefiore Hospital in New Rochelle. The victim, whose names the police did not release, was shot six times in the arm, hand, and torso. Now, I have personally experienced the Manchurian candidate, and I can tell you without much doubt that this law enforcement officer got drunk with his other buddies, and they probably slipped him a Mickey in order to use him as a fall guy. Know your enemy. Well, yeah, that's um, highly indicative of that. I mean, n nothing has really seemed to change since since the, since Rome and the Senate would basically, you know, uh, rape all the, the children and uh, you know uh, kill the slaves at will uh, openly. Now it's just more co covertly. That's all, and it's all of Congress. It's all these attorneys. They all have been evidence to be nothing but predators to humankind, period. Absolutely. This is their function. This is what they have always done. I urge everybody, why, why don't we delve into who is who? I'd like to talk about John Holdren tonight, who is the White House 
science and technology advisor. In 1976, Mr. Holdren wrote a book called The Eco Science. This book speaks of what everyone is experiencing right now. Genocide. But this book hides it under what is known as population control, environmentalism, etc. Now, I'll quote from page number 780. But first, I'd like to touch a little bit on Johnny Holdren and his peers, one of which is Paul Ehrlich, who wrote, of course, The Population Bomb. From ClimateDepot.com, 1972 article on Earth, quote, worse than Hitler, end quote, quote, Population Bomb author, author Paul Ehrlich suggested adding a forced sterilization agent to staple food and water supply. From the frontpagemag.com, Obama's biggest radical, February 27, 2009, it goes in depth on Johnny Holdren and his associates. Now, years ago in the UK, from theguardian.com, an article came out that I'd like to point everybody's attention to called UK Aid Helps to Fund Forced Sterilization of India's Poor. Money from the Department of International Development has helped pay for a controversial program that has led to miscarriages and even deaths after botched abortions. Now let's go back to Ecoscience by Johnny Holdren, page number 780. Quote, The potential value of population control and aid programs to LBCs has also been studied intensively. The late economist Stephen Anke did much of the analysis and its conclusions may be summarized in three points. One, channelizing economic channeling economic resources into population control rather than into increasing production could be 100 or so times more effective in raising per capita incomes in many LDCs. Number two, an effective birth control program might cost only 30 cents per capita per year, about 3% of current development programs. And number three, the use of bonuses to promote population control is, quote, obvious in countries where the, quote, worth of permanently preventing a birth is roughly twice the income per head. This is your administration. This is John Holdren, the science and technology advisor to this administration, directing policy. These are the same folks in 1975 that established the Office of Population Affairs, which is a depopulation program. It's also known as the Department of Health and Human Services. Obamacare is the new Auschwitz. It's guised as something to help humanity, when in reality, it funnels human beings down a kill chute efficiently and effectively to propagate and promote genocide of the human race. The psychopath is missing a frontal lobe. It is not human. It has no human compassion, no human characteristics other than the looks, no human compassion, no human empathy, and is able to view human beings as stock, stock options, securities, 
sureties, and other uses for the promotion and facilitation of national security contrary to state security which refers to human beings. National security refers to four nations which are defined under 28 U.S.C. as corporations. What you're seeing in the mainstream media and all around is genocide. National security at work. This has to end everybody. It is time to stand up. Nazi Germany is not in the past. Nazi America is here. It has been upon you since 1802 with the Indemnification Convention. At that time were the acts of enablement allowing corporations to secede all of the estates of human beings and establish life insurance policies for corporations given your life in the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. What this is, is corporate welfare, according to the first and second welfare theorems. This is all in line and enabled, exactly identical to the 1933 Acts of Enablement that Hitler passed in order to facilitate mass genocide in Nazi Germany. Rocco's being held captive because he had seven children that were taken into the child sex trafficking rings maintained by Kenosha County, Wisconsin. The treaties that you see, the Northwest Passage, Treaty of Versailles, Treaty of Peace, Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation. These treaties establish trade lines, trafficking routes, in order to traffic children through the system. Women began being trafficked after Joseph Biden passed the Violence Against Women Act which is a privacy law protecting politicians from being caught slaughtering women and children. Please look into the 1972 article regarding the population bomb. The compendium to the population bomb called Population Matters. And of course, Johnny Holdren's book, Echo Science. From zombietime.com today, I was reading through there, and they also simplify for the people that don't really want to read Echo Science. It'll give you a quick rundown. One of the quotes from page 837, compulsory abortions would be legal. Quote, Indeed, it has been concluded that compulsory population control laws, even including laws requiring compulsory abortion, could be sustained under the existing constitution if the population crisis be becomes sufficiently severe to endanger the society. From page 786, single mothers should have their babies taken away by the government or they could be forced to have abortions. Quote, one way to carry out this disapproval might be to insist that all illeg illegitimate babies be put up for adoption. 
especially those born to minors who generally are not capable of caring properly for a child alone. If a single mother really wished to keep her baby, she might be obliged to go through adoption proceedings and demonstrate her ability to support and care for it. Adoption proceedings could probably should remain more difficult for single people than for married couples in recognition of the relatively difficult difficulty of raising children alone. It would even be possible to require pregnant women to marry or have abortions, perhaps as an alternative to placement for adoption, depending on the society. From 787, mass sterilization of humans through drugs in the water supply is okay as long as it doesn't harm livestock. Quote, Adding a sterilant to drinking water or stable foods is a suggestion that seems to horrify people more than most proposals for involuntary fertility control. Indeed, this would pose some very difficult political, legal, and social questions to say nothing of the technical problems. No such sterilant exists today, nor does one appear to be under development. To be acceptable, such a substance would have to meet some rather stiff requirements. It must be uniformly effective despite widely varying doses received by individuals, and despite varying degrees of fertility and sensitivity among individuals. It must be free of dangerous or unpleasant side effects, and it must have no effect on members of the opposite sex, children, old people, pets, or livestock. Of course, he's talking about mercury. Mercury sterilizes the male. They've also put this as thermosol in immunizations in order to decrease population and promote genocide of the human race. Removal of the male, of course, enables predation of males and fe- or females and children. This is the agenda. This is policy. This is corporate policy, a life insurance policy that promotes the life of corporations over that of human beings. Yeah, well, and the thing that I, I get more perturbed by uh, each day is uh, the uh, amount of uh, uh, patriots uh, still uh, crying out for their constitutional rights, submitting to that thing as their authority in the first place, and uh, you know, people that are more interested in, in uh, getting a traffic ticket kicked out of court. Uh, then uh, the genocide order, okay, the order regarding genocide, which is on ChooseYourSide.org under the authorized documents. If you don't want to read it, go to YouTube and see the same video under the same title where I read it for you. And uh, you know, before that, we um, nailed them for human trafficking. I mean, it's evidenced, and they never rebutted it. They never argued anything. They didn't have to. One of the judges came in and said that he was properly human trafficking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not only did not not deny it, we had confirmation from uh, Philip P. Simon, the USDC um, human trafficker. In a court order. As well as the evidence that we had garnered from our interview with Judge, Federal Judge Naidu, on the air, live. Admitting that indeed, this is what they do. This is their function. In order to maintain revenue streams through the routing system known as the IRS, Internal Revenue Service, they're hiding, hiding U.S. currency offshore through that routing system that began in 1789 with the Judiciary Act. Those are the original banks, folks. What you know as U.S. Bank, People's Bank, Mellon Bank, Citibank, those only deal in bills. The courts... And don't forget to point out that those are called banks only by name, but they're run by a bunch of attorneys making that entity a law firm. Right. They're only using and laundering 
Federal Reserve notes? What's your debt notes? The original banks, which are the original banks of the 13 colonies, called courts, are the ones that deal in lawful money. Lawful money, of course, is defined as gold and silver. Every one of you have been bamboozled. You've been suckered into playing into a system of debt. And the constitutionalists are actually, believe it or not, making things worse. Because they're just the other side of the same argument. Absolutely. So they're not arguing about getting rid of all their legal codes, laws, and statutes and only adhering to the public law, which means to do no harm and hold those accountable that do harm. No, I don't want to talk about that, as I heard on a Fox radio news station today. Uh, they just want to talk about uh, what should we change the legal speed limits to or some such other argument. What does the, what does the uh, Second Amendment really say? They want to keep rehashing the same argument. Right. So you're in the same paradigm, which is within the bag of the exchequer. Absolutely. I want to touch on racism and black genocide because it started there. Margaret Sanger the founder of Planned Parenthood, started calling black human beings at around the turn of the century in the 1900s. Hitler followed through on that eugenics program that is maintained by Congress. In 1924, before Nazi Germany, Virginia passed the Racial Integrity Act. That wasn't Hitler. Hitler found United States policy was efficient at cutting overhead on behalf of corporations. 1927, the Bayer Corporation, the one that makes baby aspirin, aspirin, in bed with Dow Chemical Corporation, Johnson & Johnson, and these folks are the fund managers on your state funds. Bayer Corporation came in as the Republic of Germany and sued Poland in Congress's world courts. That's right, Congress's world courts. Because this is after 1941, Atlantic Charter, Congress has world dominion, okay, UN was created by an act of Congress, and on and on and on. The world court is nothing but another arm of Congress. Right. And that was uh, facilitated through the Articles of Confederation, even prior to 1941. 1924 was the League of Nations Covenant. The annex to the League of Nations Covenant is the Articles of Confederation. So the Bayer Corporation came in in 1927 and sued Poland. It sued Poland, asking the world courts, which is Congress, to indemnify the Polish citizen, those on state employ, public employ, public assistance, social service programs, welfare and the like, and ask the court for an order to facilitate genocide against the Polish populace. What you know as Nazi Germany was Congress and its judges discharging congressional bankruptcy using human beings as fodder. From the AtlanticBlackStar.com, attorney, black teens arrest, another example of racial profiling. No, this cop was an absolute psychopath. Now, I'm not going to read the whole story. 
Quote, one eyewitness who later recanted the statement pointed out Bo and her friends as the suspects. Quote, we were on the tri train minding our own business when a man entered the train with two BART officers and told them it was us, said Levi Allen, one of Bo's friends. The guy came from a different car and we had never seen him before. End quote. Bo and her friends were placed in handcuffs despite other people on the same train car telling the police they had the wrong group. Several bystanders even told police they saw the group of dancers get off the train at a previous stop. According to several witnesses, Bo was then slammed to the ground and struck repeatedly. One passenger added that the young woman's mouth was full of blood at this point. A cell phone video of the arrest shows passengers trying to explain to the police that they had the wrong group, but the officer didn't appear to acknowledge the bystanders. This cop, this corporate policy enforcement officer, acting on behalf of corporations directed by corporate counsel from the Association of Corporate Counsel, the Board of Com Governors, and commissioned by the Commission States, Board of Commissioners, just beat the hell out of another one of your children in front of you. With your full-on approval, consent, and patriotism to corporations. Shame on you. Yeah, I mean, it goes on and on and on. The cops are hired with a low IQ uh, for uh, by design, and they are given policy, handed down to them by attorneys and corporate counsel attorneys. Attorneys write all the rule books. They, run, they manage the, uh, the affairs of all the cops. And uh, so the attorneys are behind everything, behind this whole criminal enterprise. It's all about attorneys. That's our only predator. I don't know how to get this to the masses but once people in numbers realize this, stand up, this will end. Now, I've got uh, something pulled up here from Appalachian News. If I pronounce that right. Witness, colon, Kentucky cop jumped on hood of car, shot, killed teen girl through windshield. Dash cam footage released. Now I saw the uh, video of this earlier, and it's obvious she's just driving, traveling, not stopping, not heeding this cop's authority. I don't know what authority he thought he had to uh, stop her anyway. She wasn't speeding or doing anything uh, that was violating any public law, certainly. So she doesn't comply. He jumps on the hood of the car, fires numerous shots into the windshield, and shoots her dead. 19-year-old woman from Kentucky, uh, northern Kentucky town, is livid after a deputy fatally shot a 19-year-old woman during an encounter outside a field party Saturday. So, Deputy Tyler Brockman, 27, 27, so he probably was just fresh off his military career, I'm guessing, had received reports that people were having fun at a party. Oh no! Oh my God, these people are having fun? We can't have that in a police state. In a, and it was in a field near the Ohio River. So naturally, he had to go there and kill someone, the writer writes. Yeah, and obviously the writers and, you know, patriot media and... Uh, the media in general and is getting awfully sick and tired of hearing all this stuff about cops, but the blame always goes on the cops with all of these media outlets. Who's never directing about, them? Who's directing them? Yeah, never about their directors and who's that? Attorneys. Authorities say Brockman was out of his cruiser checking driver sobriety when Samantha Ramsey ran him with her car after ignoring his order to stop instead sped up. Okay. She was scared. She didn't run him over. 
The video shows him on the side of the car as she is going by. Then the car goes out of view, and then um, the next thing you see is uh, the surviving passengers in the car out in the road crying because uh, they just saw their friend murdered by a quote-unquote law enforcement officer. It was nothing but a policy, a corporate policy enforcer enforcing, enforcing private acts and acts of commerce under that commerce clause. Oh yes, your beloved constitution with that commerce clause allows for all of this. And cops have always had immunity. Chesley Pendleton, 20, who was in the back seat of Ramsey Carr, told the Cincinnati Inquirer that Brockman wasn't hit and instead he jumped onto the car and opened fire. Because he still thinks he's over in Afghanistan or, or Iraq. The cop was in the wrong. I was there. I was in the back seat. She said that was unnecessary force. He had no right to do that. Pendleton also said Brockman shot first, striking Ramsey, thus causing her car to speed up. That was a dead body weight on the gas pedal after she was shot. Ramsey's family and friends are outraged and others have accused Brockman of using excessive force. Any other human would have been put in jail for that. Friend Gunnar Bumi said at an emotional exchange vigil held in Ramsey's honor at the shooting site Sunday. So, let's see, there's a few more lines on here, but uh, and there's also a video, but uh, I, you get the idea here. Um, says toxicology reports going to take uh, a few weeks on her sobriety, but what does that even have to do with it under the public law? You're pulling somebody over or telling them to stop because you want to make sure they're not breaking any private acts and acts of commerce? Or they're going to do something. They might do something. They're thinking about doing something. Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany. But now, like you said earlier, like how you put it, which is just really kind of... Congress. It's just Congress. Congress. Con. With. Gress. Comes from the word transgression. These are your transgressors, folks. And you keep going out there and voting for them and campaigning for them, donating to their campaign, so they can do what? Rape and kill you some more. Because you love it so much. Now... From the 12160.info page, Canadian RCMP uncover over 1,000 cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women. An RCMP project aimed at tallying the number of missing and murdered Indigenous women has uncovered over 1,000 cases. The RCMP was able to determine over 1,000 cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women with the help of other police forces across the country according to a person with knowledge of the product, project, who asked not to be named because you're not the official spokesman on the project. As part of the project, the RCMP reached out to over 200 police forces across the country to get a peek in their files to compile their statistics. Now, years ago, and I know that human memory is short, so short, yeah, I call it the Delhausen effect. They forget real quickly. Real happened. quickly. Real quickly. I want everybody to pay attention to the stolen generations of Australia. The same thing has occurred over and over and over and over again in Canada, Greece, the UK. United States Incorporated, from the Stolen Generations on Wiki. The Stolen Generations, also known as the Stolen Children, were the children of Australian Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islander descent who were removed from their families by the Australian federal and state government agencies and church missions under acts of their respective Parliaments. The word parlay means to speak. 
parliament means the action of speaking. In 1941, Congress got global governance through the Atlantic Charter as the law-making body for the global politics. All about con congressional bankruptcy, once again, only on a global scale uh, then at that time. The Stolen Generations, Franklin Scandal, Conspiracy of Silence, Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper, Nancy Schaefer, my sister, my beloved, as a senator did a report to Congress about the corruption of child protection and was murdered because of it. Shortly after releasing the information to uh, the Alex Jones Network, by the way. And that was other evidence. That was the House case involving Plano, Texas and the Plano ISD raping children all the way up to then Rick Perry, who is traded on Dun and Bradstreet as the general counsel and also as the Department of Health and Human Services which is the depopulation program established in 1974 by Dr. Henry Kissinger known as the Office of Population Affairs out of which the Department of Health and Human Services was built upon. And the FDA. This is all part of the same depopulation program. But I just love getting my my uh, children raped and murdered, so I'm going to keep voting. The FDA and the Freeburg's Ethics Commission International have contracts with each other to use human beings as human test subjects through the medical industry, through the psychological industry, through the criminal industry. Rocco's son, Adam Larson, was murdered by Mary Kay Wagner, a judge in Kenosha County, Wisconsin, and a psychiatrist on directives of corporate counsel. The Association of Corporate Counsel maintains revenue streams on behalf of corporations. The Board of Governors, the Board of the Association of Corporate Counsel includes such as Anheuser-Busch and Microsoft using human beings to discharge congressional bankruptcy by death, by criminalization, through the medical industry, through the psychological industry, through the public school systems, through any institutionalized state maintained by the Federal Emergency Management Acts. Emergency states or states of emergencies are means and mechanizations of holding human beings in institutionalized states. And, and you notice that Congress has kept the emergency on since 1933 Emergency Banking Act. It's never been discontinued it's a perpetual state of emergency. That's how they operate. So it's an emergency that they must institutionalize your kids, diagnose them, uh, get them into the chute so they can discharge their congressional bankruptcy. It's an emergency. This is an emergency that you people understand this. 
from the rules of procedure of the Freeburg's Ethics Commission International, known as FECI, F-E-C-I, Revised Version 2006. Preamble. The Freeburg's Ethics Commission International, or FECI, was founded in 1980 and is oriented on the United States Review Boards. Since its inception, Fiji has reviewed and provided expert opinions for clinical studies using human test subjects. After more than 25 years of existence, the Fiji has achieved a national and international reputation for professionalism. The expert opinion prepared for a clinical study is based on the current editions of the recommendations of the revised World Medical Association's Declaration of Helsinki, the directives and guidelines of the European Union, and the regulations or laws of the United States Food and Drug Administration, known as the FDA. Additionally, the current laws and regulations in Germany and all other countries in which the clinical study is to be conducted are also an inherent part of this basis. This is global genocide perpetrated by the United States Congress, the House of Representatives, and the United States Senate acting as a con criminal enterprise known as Confederacy in action. You know, the stats for institutionalized, well, just the prison industry alone, in what's referred to as the continental United States, is... 25% of the world's population are behind bars and that 25% being in the continental United States of America. However, we only have 2% of the world's population. And so these talking heads out there talking about how this is the greatest country in the world, obviously didn't read that stat or they ignored it. 25% of the world's population locked up behind prison bars in the United States continental, but only 2% of the world's population is there. How do you like that? Well, guys obviously must like it because you keep voting this uh, criminal enterprise in. Uh, but people say, well, well what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know, because even if, you know, one person goes out and votes, oh, we got your consent. We're going to keep discharging congressional bankruptcy in the manner we're used to. Uh, what do we do? Well, what you do is you withdraw yourself as corporate stock from this criminal enterprise. I had to do a... Uh, Hostile takeover of the franchise name, okay, revest in my own house, so I could come in and hold them accountable. That's what I did, held them accountable. This is why we're evidencing this stuff. And all this stuff that Tammy just spoke of is all in their own writings. It's all evidence. Why has nobody ever held them accountable before? Because they come under their statute and try to come in there and plead as a Plebeian. Don't work. From page 782 of Echo Science, written by John Holdren, the current administration science and technology advisor to President Obama. Population control, direct measures. Before any really effective population control can be established, the political leaders, economists, national planners, and others who determine such policies must be convinced of its necessity. 
Most governments have been reluctant to try measures beyond traditional family planning that might be effective because they consider them too strong, too restrictive, and too much against traditional attitudes. They are also reasonably enough concerned about resistance from political opponents or the populace at large. In many countries, such measures may never be considered until massive famines, which are created by the IMF, political unrest, which are created by the CIA, or ecological disasters, which are created by the CIA, make their initiation imperative. In such emergencies, whatever measures are economically and technologically expedient will be likeliest to be imp imposed, regardless of their political or social accept acceptability. A case in point was the sudden imposition in 1976 of compulsory sterilization in some Indian states and for government employees in Delhi, following two decades of discouraging results from voluntary family planning. Congress controls the International Monetary Fund. Congress is all created, perpetuated, and maintained by attorneys. Don't believe me? Look at the House of Delegates. That's the foundation. Above that, then we have the House of Representatives and the Senate. Most of them critters are still attorneys. The ones that aren't are with the medical industry. Psychological uh, industry, the psychiatrists. There you go, psychiatrists. Ernst Rudin met his use in Nazi Germany as a psychiatrist, one of the leading psychiatrists imposing these concepts, and was swiftly transferred to the American administration after the end of Nazi Germany to continue on with the eugenics program in the United States incorporated against the human being. In 1947, with the National Security Act, human beings were listed as the enemy of the state. This is not your friend. This is not a good father to be patronizing and calling father. But this is why they're spending 90% of their time campaigning, trying to show you what a good guy they are, like, you know, Michael Grimm, and that was, that was a good one to see come down, because you, you see, with his background, where the direction of Congress has been headed. He was what? He was uh, former Marines, FBI, okay? The Marines, all of the military was redefined in 1947 with the National Security Act. The military has been taught and led to protect foreign nations as defined by 28 U.S.C. Chapter 97. We'll be right back, folks. Stick around. Hi, and welcome back to the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio. Freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We are a listener-supported radio station. And if you'd like to donate, please visit us at www.freedomslips.com and click on our support pages. Every little bit helps. Join us in chat. Go find our store. It's on our homepage. If you want to listen in on your cell phones, visit our homepage and click on the mobile icon. You can also, of course, join us in chat. I have a hard time loading chat when I'm on the air because I've got everything else loaded, but uh, I'm in there off and on uh, every other time. Tonight, we're updating on Rocco, of course. Um, Bo wanted to take that. He'll be right back. Uh, he seems to be on a break. Uh, we're going to talk about death derivatives. Now, in uh, 
2000. Well, I just wanted to explain what the uh, dockets are that the uh, McKinley County said yesterday as opposed to today. That's what people want to know out there. Okay, well, what's this deal with Rocco? Well, yesterday when I was on the air, I, I, I was uh, saying how they said, well, we don't have any charges. We can't really hold them. So right. and they said waiting for another agency. Okay, right. we didn't know what that meant until today because they what it should have meant is they were holding them for us because he is our citizen. It's not theirs. He's not their property. He's our property. Right. And on Monday, um, as of Monday, uh, the lien was lifted. Uh, let me go pull it up here. Uh, um, I've got my director on. Hi, Katie. Yeah. Oh, he needs attention. Um, let's see here. Sorry about that, folks. I didn't have it loaded. It's in a PDF. And um, you can get copies of these if you'd like them uh, from me through Skype. So as of Monday, I put a lien on the federal government's banks as created in 1789 through the Judiciary Act which are the courts in the original 13 colonies. The 1790-89 Judiciary Act established a routing system of banking. So if you go into court in any state in the U.S. Incorporated, in any county in the U.S. Incorporated, depending on the day of the year when the case is initiated, you are being used to discharge congressional bankruptcy. You are a deposit in that bank, court, as defined by Black's Law Dictionary. And as such, you are quickly exchanged by the clerk, the teller of the bank, into a negotiable instrument. Those monies are going into the original 13 colonies banks that are owned by Congress. The IRS was later established to funnel FRNs in a money laundering scheme so they could be kept offshore. That's all that system is. Now, on Monday, the inmate search by name, McHenry County, listed Robert R. Larson, which is not the name he claims, as having no charges against him. The resisting and obstructing was nolle no prosequi, which means they've nullified the prosecution. The prosecuting attorney came in on motion and maintained that they're no longer prosecuting him. That was on count one. Count two, nolle prosequi, resisting a peace officer. Of course, because they didn't have cause to be charging him. They didn't have a warrant for the arrest. They didn't have cause, meaning evidence that he's ever harmed a human being. And at that time, the third line said that he was being held, not local, and he was waiting. This morning, he was released from McHenry County. Yeah, and, and he did, he's not to be released. He was to be discharged. Why can't we release a citizen? He's not a citizen of the United States, Inc., period. End of story, okay? They keep trying to beat you over the head with a ball bat saying, Oh, yes, you are. That's how they work, see? Now, the pedophile that has been preying on Rocco's children since 2009, Mary K. Wagner, was the first place we looked. Kenosha County is not listing Rocco in their holding facility. We have a sheriff, a PI, and a deputy sheriff looking for Rocco and have not 
at this time been able to find him. Now again, this is a shakedown of the United States lower case and an attempt to get us to shut up. Rocco is our beloved. This only serves to piss me off. As much as it did when Jeff was killed in 2010 by the same corporation, as much as it did when they killed Nancy Schaefer, Bill Bowen, George Zincon, and attempted on me to get me to shut up. This pisses me off as much as it did in 2012 when the FBI stole my daughter. My eldest daughter at that time was 17 and taken by an FBI agent pretending to, quote, love her, who was 48 years old. At this time, she is with a 60-year-old youth minister in Aurora, Illinois. All of these things have occurred to shut me up. They killed my husband in 2000 through the medical industry. In the three years following, they killed 37 other members of my family. After I went up against them the first time, when I was working for the Catholic Diocese, Harbor Creek Youth Services, and I mistakenly pointed my finger at them and told them that they were preying on children. They were drugging children and raping children. While they were being funded by federal funds through Congress, while they were trafficking children through the juvenile justice industry and passing children who were locked up and without the ability to give each other crabs, crabs and other STDs. What Nancy Schaefer and the rest of us found back in 2009 and 2010 regarding the House case was Plano, Texas, a teacher at the Plano ISD had given twin babies sexually transmitted diseases while in her care. The Department of Health and Human Services had treated those children for sexually transmitted diseases and pointed the finger at a falsely accused male who had never been diagnosed in any way, shape, or form with a sexually transmitted disease. Those children were given to their adopted mother who happened to have an STD. This is corporate welfare. Every time a child is diagnosed, this generates revenue to discharge congressional bankruptcy. In order to diagnose children to maintain revenue streams, congressmen, congresswomen, Attorneys, judges, U.S. Marshals, Federal Bureau of Investigation agents, CIA agents, psychiatrists, juvenile justice workers, Catholic dioceses, and other child predators have to prey on children first. 
They have to murder children to derive death derivatives. They have to murder men, murder women, rape, molest, assault, terrorize, traumatize human beings in order to diagnose them through the international um, I see classification of diseases and disorders. Those diagnoses are dollar amounts. Each one discharging congressional bankruptcy by generating revenue into the medical, psychological, and criminal industries as pedophiles and psychopaths trade human beings with each other. This is the quiet form of Nazi Germany. This is the quiet form of Pol Pot's regime. This is a quiet Vietnam. This is a quiet North Korea. The Pyongyang Project. A capacity building adventure. A clearinghouse discharges congressional bankruptcy. That clearinghouse is called the Department of State, Secretary of State. By using human beings as product, the team of productivity, the things that maintain corporations on welfare, contrary to the agreement with the Treasury that maintains Congress was going to protect mankind. Please hear me. You are inside the war. So that diagnosis out of the ICD-10 now is uh, same thing as lexicon out of their uh, uh, exchequer purse. Right. Every word, every word you speak in court is another dollar amount. That's what the thesaurus is. The thesaurus is where the gold is. Diagnosis is a synonym for title. It means you've been called something else. This creates an easement through your body that allows another adhesion contract. Every time you buy into the medical industry, the psychological industry, the legal industry, these things are concepts. Each concept is sold to you at a price. It is known as the thesaurus, stemming from the words Ari thesis, meaning where the gold is. Every word is worth something. This can only occur if you are patronizing it. Rocco is being held political prisoner because I teach these things. And they know that their time is near. If you are not patronizing this thing, if you stop being the horror of Babylon, Babel falls. Revelation 19. Revelation 18. The rules are simple. Do no harm. And love each other as yourself. Not away from you not as something else, 
not as a title, not as a concept, black, white, gray, brown, orange, yellow, female, male, Christian, Jew, Hindu, Zion, porcupine. Jesus said, divest yourself of all that possesses you. That's entitlement theory. Constitutional theory. Democratic theory. Demo means people. Kratis means to control or possess. Politics stems from the words poly, meaning many, and kratis, meaning to control or possess. Policy is derived from two words, poly, meaning many, and side, meaning to kill. Policy is the action of killing many. An insurance policy maintained under the 14th Amendment dictating that corporations or persons have life and citizens do not. Citizen is a fiction. Stop living as a fiction. You are buying concepts from the law merchant. When you stop buying concepts from the law merchant, the law merchant wails. Revelation That's Congress. 18. That's Congress too. The law merchant is Congress. It's all attorneys. It's all concepts. Any entity selling you concepts. The medical industry, the psychological industry, and the legal industry. It's all made up of concepts. You believe these things exist. Believe stems from the word be and left, to be left from, to be gone from the self. You are not living in a relative state. If you are buying concepts and you're acting as a concept, you're a fiction. You're gone. That means that you're partaking or eating, buying concepts from the tree of knowledge. A tree of knowledge. A tree of knowledge doesn't have apples on it. It has concepts. You're told in Genesis, a biogenesis, the doctrine of a biogenesis, which means away from life, mind, and soul, that eating from the tree of knowledge or partaking from the tree of knowledge kills you. That is defined as civil death in Black's Law Dictionary. You have abjured the realm. You gave up your garden because you're buying concepts from the law merchant. Okay. Um. You know what's amazing? Um, I just had a flashback to uh, Matrix Revolutions and at the end um, Smith's uh, uh, Agent Smith absorbs Neil, and you know if you look at Neil as the public law, Agent Smith is a private acts and acts of commerce. When Smith absorbed the public law, it destroyed him. Killed him. He that's, couldn't that's be what, relative. That's what. That's that's when uh, that was the end of uh, Agent Smith. Well, and and look at the whole. I I really I didn't watch The Matrix until 2012. I was a virgin to The Matrix, and um, the symbology in it just goes on and on and on different levels. Oh, it's just profound. You've got Galen, um, 
Galen is the, the... He was the architect. And and the same thing. Galen was the architect for the system. Alias Galen. Claudius, alias Galen. All of these things are sold to you by the law merchant. You look at Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rocco is our son. Let me repeat that. Rocco is our collective child. Not owned by the United States Incorporated. By the evidence, which he did in due diligence, completely divest himself of that thing and revest into his own house. He has established his own house. But these criminal thugs will keep beating him over the head, calling him Robert Larson. The fictional last name. Because he won't contract. He is being shaken down, as much as we're being shaken down by them holding Rocco. It's not Joe, because he's not patronizing the thing any longer. Absolutely. He, he's he's uh, more... Uh, Akin to Jesus, who's on the cross being crucified. And John, more like John. And of course, John was amazing in the writing of Revelation. Throughout our walk, all of our listeners are able to see by the evidence the ins and outs of politics or the practice of law. The word law literally means to lay down. If you are no longer buying concepts, you are no longer lying down. That means in a relative state that you are resurrected. Resurrected means to stand again, to be able to stand again. Now, in 1 Corinthians 6, it says, The body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. That excludes all of the priest's interpretation that fornication is gay rights and straight rights, and bisexuality, homosexuality. That says that all of those priests are liars, blasphemes, because the only way for the human being to fornicate, according to Jesus, is to give your body over to a Lord God. The very next statement says, God has raised up the Lord God, so shall he raise us up by his own power. The first article of the Constitution says that power has been vested in a Congress consisting of the United States Senate and the House of Representatives. Hello, God. You've raised up the Lord God so shall you raise us up by your own power. Stop calling it your father, which is the action of patriotism. The word patre means father. In the action of patriotism, you are giving it your body. You are fornicating with the transgressor, with Congress. Stop doing that. You are to call no man your father, not even Christ. You are to be patronizing your own houses and not being a tenant of the House of Representatives. Well, let's uh, drive it home some more with another uh, headline here and see what 
is behind that door, should you choose to go with the other landlord, a.k.a. the Lord God, step right up, and here we go. Homeschool mom harassed, ambulance employee tells mom, we're agents of the state during home inspection. Okay, mother targeted because she homeschools her son. Uh, this one is by Paul Joseph Watson. Yes, he's with Infowars, but moving beyond that, after a concerned mother called 911 fearing her son was choking, an EMS worker proceeded to conduct an inspection of her house on the premise that she homeschooled, telling the woman, we're agents of the state. 1864 Geneva Convention. Prisoners of war are picked up by the Red Cross and any other foundling hospital based on necessity. In 1933, the United States Incorporated declared itself bankrupt. Every citizen of the globe who is not a citizen or resident of their own house, of their own real government, is a prisoner of war under the 1929 Geneva Convention. So it goes on, uh, Krista Spinks Bordelon of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, called for an ambulance after her asthmatic son began complaining of chest pains and turning red in the face. It was one of those should I call or not call situations, wrote Bordelon on a private Facebook page for homeschool parents. They were super rude when they got there, immediately telling me he was fine. Okay, yeah, so they, uh, this barge in there, oh, he's fine, let's have a look around here. Anyways, however, the situation became even worse when one of the EMS supervisors asked Bordelon why her son wasn't in school. When she replied that her son was homeschooled, the worker began conducting an inspection of Bordelon's house, telling her, we're agents of the state. Now we must see your papers, and what evidence do you have that you are legally signed up for homeschooling on the uh, federal state-funded homeschool project? She called 911 and asked, that her son and herself be a prisoner of war by patronizing another house. Yeah, if we had ambulances under the public law, we wouldn't have this situation. Uh, just a terrible situation here. Because Asthma didn't exist until uh, Louis Pasteur started pasteurizing milk products and children and adults alike were exposed to lactose and other partially metabolized food products. Partially metabolized means that it's cooked at high temperatures just like it would do in your gut and there would be no need for such a call if you were not consuming things and purchasing things from the entity that is slowly killing you and using your body to discharge congressional bankruptcy through the international international classification of diseases and disorders otherwise known as currently the ICD-10 There's more here, too, that, uh, if you read behind, uh, between the lines here, let me just go on. I was told by a supervisor they are now agents of the state, wrote Bordelon, adding, that is probably where it all stemmed from, apart from their rudeness and bad interactions with me and my son, who is autistic. But a report was definitely filed. Autistic. Another diagnosis. So... so and how did he get autistic? Probably through vaccines, as we've seen over and over again. 
and the public school system, which penalizes boys for being boys. Autism is a socially created disorder. It is not genetic. Let's see here, uh, let's see, this is, looks like a statement from her Facebook page. The moment your child is complaining that his stomach hurts, then points to his chest instead, and his face is turning red and he's coughing, so you call 911. Except when EMS gets there, they laugh at you and tell you, if it's asthma, he won't be complaining about abdominal pain, except he's not because he's pointing to his chest. Then the other asks, why aren't they in school? then proceeds to look around your house when you tell her you homeschool. Seriously, people, I am not making this up. I am livid. Borderland now says she is super nervous, having filed a complaint. Oh, boy. Patronizing she's getting thing. more. Yeah, she's getting deeper and deeper in the muck here, isn't she? Uh, having filed a complaint and is planning on joining the Homeschool Legal Defense Association... So attorneys are praying on her. Yeah, so the attorneys can now pray on her. Yeah, exactly. Adding, I hate having to feel scared for making a good choice. Well, I'm sorry. You don't understand the federal state then about uh, being able to say it's a good choice or not. Because if you understood it's a criminal enterprise perpetuating human trafficking and genocide, you'd want no business calling them for anything. No matter what. Giving up the garden. She called 911 and sold her soul by inviting the snake into her home. This is what the snake does. That's its function. Patronizing. You know, this is exactly why we can't just live out our lives till the end. Because uh, somewhere there, usually at the moment of birth, uh, when they uh, get that mother to sign off on your birth certificate and signing you over at state property, uh, from that moment on, attorneys are with you in the background, poking on you through fourth generation warfare, everything else that we've evidenced, attorneys are there from... Cradle to the grave when you patronize this confederacy, a.k.a. the federal state, a.k.a. United States of America, a.k.a. Congress, Inc. So, does that help any of you? I hope you're starting to get the picture of here, uh, you know, why uh, the Constitution is just selling you down the same river. All roads lead to Rome. The gate, I mean, the uh, path is wide, but the gate is narrow. The gate is very narrow. There's only, in the end, there's only one real truth. All the other stuff you believe to be the truth, or you think, or you heard, yada, yada, yada. Get so tired of these quote-unquote researchers that start out their statements by saying, I heard. Okay? What does it say in Articles of Confederation in Article 12? Pledged. You were pledged. And charged. And charged. To discharge congressional bankruptcy. And they got these people jumping around saying, well, we the people have to take our rights back. What do you mean, we the people? You're talking about Congress? Because they wrote that stuff, we the people. We the people. Okay? How about... I am standing up under their own authority and holding these enterprises, the criminal enterprise, the Confederated State Congress, accountable for human trafficking and genocide, as has been evidenced start to finish in my court case, is coming in under as a sovereign state. The definition of pledged asset from Investopedia.com 
is an asset that is transferred to a lender for the purposes of securing debt. The lender of the debt maintains possession of the pledged asset, but, is, but does not have ownership unless default occurs. 1933, Congress declared bankruptcy. It wrapped all of its debt around your neck, the pledged asset, as per, once again, Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation. It charged and pledged you the global citizen of the United States Incorporated since 1941 Atlantic Charter to discharge its depraved bankrupt state as the trustee of its own bankruptcy. Now when something comes in and maintains as a king, Black's Law Dictionary defines hell as the lower chambers of the exchequer. A marshal is defined as one who guards hell, the lower chambers of the exchequer, which defines what a jail is, what a bank is, what a hospital is since 1864 Geneva Convention. When you feel that you are subject of hell, you really are, according to Black's Law Dictionary. According to the attorneys, wrapping that millstone around your neck to discharge their bankruptcy in a perpetual business schematic known as a confederacy in action. You can find the members of this confederacy by going to the International Monetary Fund and looking up the member lists. From wakeupfromyourslumber.com, Hammond, Indiana, caught placed on administrative leave after being caught abusing his canine. This no, is, cops aren't psychopathic at all, no. Well, this is a video, folks, but I urge everybody to go look up that story. Google it. Um, I posted the link on my Facebook wall. This cop was picking this dog up, German Shepherd, of course, a police canine unit, by its neck. And, and casually just tossing it around, punching it. It was all videotaped by, of course, uh, a citizen. And there's a short blurb. A disturbing video posted on YouTube yesterday shows ha a Hammond, Indiana officer abusing his canine unit. The video went viral, caused significant uproar, which, as the Northwest Indiana Gazette reported, and resulted in the, the mayor of Hammond placing the officer on administrative leave pending further investigation. Now, ironically enough, if that dog, the canine officer, was abused by a citizen, they would have been charged with assault of an officer. Why isn't this cop charged with assault of an officer? I don't know. What do you think the sheep are going to be more outraged at? That incident where the cop jumped on the car and decided to just uh, plug this 19-year-old full of holes because she wouldn't obey? Or uh, this dog? Well, it's I, 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 I'm betting on the dog because people are like, Oh, the poor dog. Oh, the poor dog. Oh, I see they killed another citizen in Kentucky. Oh, that poor dog. 
what knowledge the citizens can stop another slaying from occurring, knowing that this officer is a known psychopath. From NBC2.com, Cape Coral police officer arrested for sex with a 16-year-old. Cape Coral, Florida. The Cape Coral Police Department has arrested one of their own officers for having sex with a minor. KCM Ortiz, 37, is accused of having a sexual relationship with a 16-year-old girl. Her parents reported in February that the girl was having sex with an unknown Cape Coral police officer. Investigators in interviewed the teen and immediately identified Ortiz as the officer involved. He was relieved of duty at that point. Ortiz and the teen met when he responded to a call at the girl's home. Police said since then, Ortiz picked her up from the home three times in his police car. Now, I believe that all the citizens should just dial 911. Invite the psychopaths into your home. What do you think, Bo? Well, yeah, I mean, if you want to get a family member killed or something, just call 911 on him. Make sure you show them all your stuff so they can case the place, and later on they can facilitate guarantee insurance by robbing you and fingering your neighbor. Or maybe if you have enough stuff and you're underinsured, they can burn your house down for you, like they were doing in Florida. Or flood you out using geoengineering techniques. And that reminds me, ABC News ran a story here, a uh, YouTube video I saw, and then I found a corresponding story from 2009, actually, when this stuff first came to light. But uh, companies are uh, putting life insurance policies on their employees now, previously it was uh, without their knowledge or consent, and this lawsuit brought this to light, so now they got to get the consent, but they're still doing it. Uh, this is from 2009, yeah, um, Daily Cost, AB News, stunned to discover dead peasant insurance. Yeah, dead peasant insurance. Is what they call it. Now this comes from Michael Moore's Capitalism, a love story. And Michael Moore is still selling you down that constitutional river of the same path leads to Rome. But uh, nevertheless, the information you know about the insurance is significant because it ties directly into what Tammy's been teaching about guarantee insurance. And the more I learn about it, the more I can teach about it too, and I have. And it's a real thing. That mudslide in Washington, okay, they, they, uh, the, you know, attorneys came in and said, well, this isn't cold. we got to remove all these trees and stuff. They oh, we get a mudslide. Oh, we don't know how that happened. It was a natural disaster. Same thing in Montana recently. Uh, Katrina, the levees broke. It was a Corps of Engineers. Paid for, funded, fully funded through federal funding to build the levees that broke that sell you property that's below sea level. And the same thing occurred out in California, which we have evidence of from years ago. Jeffrey Henderson, his family was all attacked after he witnessed sheriffs throwing flares into abandoned homes and into dry fields of grass, videotaped this, starting the wildfires out in California. Soon after that, of course, he was attacked by anonymous CPS callers and they took all of his kids and have kept him busy ever since. Years before In the rat that, race. Years before that, they sold him a house on federal land. He got it real cheap, bought into it, bought some property. They flooded him out. He ended up calling 911. One of the fire department members was trying to drown one of his kids. Jeffrey went to grab the child. He was charged with impeding and assault because he was overbreeding. Now, if you're out there thinking, well, that's not me, that's not going to happen to me, you know, just let this stuff continue here and just keep patronizing it, and you'll find yourself as Job before you know it at some point. Maybe not now, maybe not tomorrow. Someday, attorney's going to latch on to you on the back side somewhere. You won't even know the attorney's name. He probably works for the uh, Board of Commissioners or City Council. He's a corporate council attorney somewhere, 
like such as the conservator Scott K. Summers, in McHenry County, that uh, we evidence fully what their function is. It's going to happen. It will happen to you. I guarantee it because they guaranteed it already with insurance. And so, it's all written in their acts. It's all written in all the contracts. And, they, and it, yeah, and they got insurance policies, employees, you know, low, lower level employees, and and they may never even find out about it in the past. Now maybe they have to now. Um, doesn't matter. Most people don't pay attention to that stuff, or the gallon housing effect kicks in. And they forgot what they the sign with their sign with their agreements to get a job. It's doing whatever they had to to feed their family, but making a devil uh, of a deal there. Contracting with Satan, aka your adversary, aka an attorney. Absolutely. Definition of a term is to pay homage to another Lord God. They don't pay homage to you, they don't care about humanity. They're missing the frontal lobe. The whole purpose and design of depopulating the human populace is to control that populace. Psychopath is the devolved species. It is not a human. Look how they control you through emergency broadcasts. Uh, we got a crisis in the Ukraine, Kiev, oh Iraq, you know, shock and awe. We got a crisis in Syria. Oh no, there's another Cold War starting up between the C Confederation of uh, Russia and the United States Inc. You know, and it's all the same thing. All the same. These guys are playing you like a bunch of fools, thinking that they're separate. These concepts. You're buying these concepts of you know separate countries. Treaties. Read the Atlantic Charter. Put it in the context of "We the People" means Congress. Look at what a treaty is. It's an agreement between two banks. And it goes on and on and on. It's the same game over and over again. You guys keep falling for it over and over again. It's absolutely disgusting. And each generation gets dumber and dumber by design. So this is not only allowed to perpetuate but fester into this 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 giant festering uh, hill of pus that we're dealing with today. Now, in their own words, Rocco's being held without any cause, without any warrant, without any other reason other than to shake us down. This is Nazi Germany. A festering sack of pus. This is worse than Nazi Germany because it's quiet Nazi Germany and everybody is tuning in to their, to their big dame on the way home from work and seeing what the scores are for their favorite teams and they can tell you all about that but they never heard of the Atlantic Charter uh, another story here real quick NBC News S. Cambia County Jail in Pensacola Florida hit by deadly blast guarantee Florida. insurance sure you know and this shows you how safe they're keeping their uh, Incarcerated folks there. They're in there for some kind of ridiculous commercial crime. Uh, Ninety-five percent of them, I guarantee it. Being murdered on purpose. Florida officials are investigating whether county jail's flooded laundry room was the source of leaking gas that sparked the massive explosion that killed two inmates and injured 150 others. Well, I'd say they're already injured if they're in there. You already brought them in the law, administrated them. Uh, sentenced them. But now they're making even more money by diagnosing them after they exploded this place. Not to mention they're going to get the sheeple to rebuild it. Patriotism says they're going to rebuild it. And the majority, the majority are in institutionalized states based on the, the definition of a commercial crime, which is a crime against the laws of revenue. That means that they're charging you, the human populace, for undercutting Congress. 
Now, if the Mafia did that and came and shook you down for undercutting their little game, their drug cartels called charters, little charters is what cartel means, they'd be charged under commercial crimes for taking care of you and shaking you down. Now, Congress doesn't have the necessity to use a tire iron to your knees. It has law enforcement that does the same thing using a taser or a 9mm Glock in your face or the face of an 11-year-old building a fort. It has agents that come riding along in little white horses called ambulances that ransack your home during inspections after you call them and maintain your patriotism. You did a report last summer that just burned me like beyond belief when a father had called 911 because his son took off in his pickup. Yeah, that's exactly what I was referring to earlier. Yeah, took off in the pickup and called 911. The, father, the stepfather was a, it was a stepfather for God's sakes. So, um, Family's broken. That's by design, you know, by the attorneys already. So we got a, already got a broken family here. Stepfather's got, you know, no real uh, idea of what's going on. He calls 911. They find him. They shoot him dead. Over a pickup truck. Yeah, it was just a kid. 16 or 17 years old, maybe. Um, you know, uh, just absolutely... I mean, maybe people would get it. You know, this is the problem with the quiet war and the silent weapons. You know, they don't get it. Uh, maybe, now, if they strapped you to a, uh, you know, a piece, you know, uh, hung you up on a crucifix and started clipping off a little bit of your fingers a little bit at a time, saying, okay, so now are you a U.S. citizen? Because we can only get you help here if you're a U.S. citizen, you know. Uh, this is what they're doing in Morocco. This is what I pictured. They clip off another little piece of his finger. No, no, you, no. Uh, we, we don't, we don't recognize that. Uh, uh, you know, hostile takeover you did of the franchise name, uh, Dewey. Uh, you're going to have to uh, admit your uh, Robert Larson, so uh, we can get you some medical help here. Well, I need to make a statement known then. Robert Richard. House of Larson has been under duress since February 30 or uh, January 31st, 2014. Well, Regardless, going back further, he's been under you know this uh, psychological warfare, warfare. and uh, silent uh, weapons uh, since 2009 at least. Probably going back to his birth though, like right. I said. But under duress, he is not able to enter into any contracts, regardless of what you do to him. He could sign a contract with you right now that's unconscionable because he's under duress. So it doesn't matter what your intent is. The result is still that I will see you drawn and quartered by your peers. That as of February 26, 2014, owed the United States, lowercase, over $17 trillion in gold based on your actions of holding hostage a public vessel as defined under 46 U.S.C. So you minions, you better decide what side you're on because it's coming down quickly. As the stories were flying last night, I only got through like about half of my list of stories I had, and I was just popping them off. And we'll be back on Saturday, folks. So Love emergency, you, everybody. Emergency, emergency alert situation. Be well, everybody. Thank you, Bo. Thanks, folks.